Hey viewers, in this video, I'm going to explain about Helm and its features. Helm is evolving version to version. Understanding basic principles and its features is more important. I will try to explain its basic principles so that you can use Helm irrespective of version. I'm going to discuss about what is Helm and its features and also we are going to see what is Helm chart and also what is templating engine and what is the importance of Tiller in Helm and what role it plays. It is a package manager for Kubernetes. You might be knowing about Kubernetes. If you don't know about Kubernetes, please watch my previous videos. I just briefed a bit about uh, Kubernetes and its components. So package manager, so we can compare Helm with apt-get for Ubuntu. If you are using Ubuntu operating system to download some libraries or to install some softwares, you run the apt-get and the library name. Or... So in the same way, when you are using uh, CentOS, you use EOM and also same as Brew for macOS. Helm collects all Kubernetes YAML files, packaging them and distribute them via private or public repository so that anyone can reuse them without an extra effort. If you are a Java or a Scala developer, you know that Maven repository, right? So where you can have all the required libraries and artifacts and you download them via your Maven tool. In the same way, the Kubernetes YAML files for different applications can be distributed in public or private repository. Like how Maven is for Java and Scala applications, Helm is for Kubernetes. We can use Helm to download the Kubernetes applications from public and the private repositories. Let us have a look at some scenario. You have Kubernetes cluster and you deployed some applications and services in it and to monitor these applications and services you need Prometheus application which is a monitoring tool. To install Prometheus in Kubernetes cluster you need a couple of Kubernetes components like a stateful set for databases and config map for external configurations and some secrets for credentials and some secret data and also Kubernetes user with the respective permissions and couple of services. For this, you have to create YAML files. So how you can create them? So basically, you need to find which Prometheus image you have to use and you may search in Google and you write YAML files. Once you collect all these YAML files, you need to test them. It's a time consuming job and it's a tedious. The deployment of Prometheus is pretty much standard across Kubernetes clusters and other developers also go through the same process. It makes perfect sense if someone collects all those YAML files, bundles them and make them available in some repository so that other developers can use the same bundle and they can install the Prometheus in their Kubernetes cluster. Sharing Helm charts become common activity and more popular across the industry because it increases the productivity and also saves a lot of time for the organizations. Whenever you want to deploy some applications in Kubernetes cluster, before creating manually Kubernetes components, better check always in public repos whether there is already available Helm chart for that application. You can search in the command line using the Helm command, Helm search, and the application name like uh, Elastic or Prometheus or Grafana. And also you can browse through the Helm hub. It's a public repo. And there are two kinds of uh, repositories, uh, public repositories where the Many people uh, who are ready to share the Helm charts to the public, they can share in public uh, repositories like a Helm Hub. And there are 
private repositories as well. Some organizations, they don't want to share their Helm charts to the public due to some security reasons. The second feature of Helm is templating engine. What that actually means? Suppose you have Kubernetes cluster and you have an application which has multiple microservices to be deployed in Kubernetes cluster. Further, you are going to have deployment and service config file and the service and deployment configuration for each and every microservice is pretty much same except image name or application name and version. Without Helm, you are going to write this deployment and service YAML files for each and every microservice by defining image name, docker image name, application name and version for the specific microservice. What if we have common blueprint for each and every microservice? The deployment configurations for each and every microservice are pretty much same except the application name, Docker image name and version. Without Helm, if you want to deploy these microservices in Kubernetes cluster, you would write separate deployment service config files for each and every microservice by defining its their own image name, application name, and version. Since the difference between all those YAML files are few lines and few values, we can create a common blueprint for all those YAML files. The dynamic values which are going to be changed can be replaced with some placeholders. Instead of creating separate YAML file for each and every microservice, using Helm, we can create standard template yaml file which looks like this so the values which are dynamic that means which are going to be changed can be replaced with placeholders those placeholder syntax looks like this name image and port number and these values will be replaced dynamically by external configurations those external configurations mentioned in values.yaml file Values YAML file contains the each and every value here, like name, which is the app one in values.yaml file, and the same like name, image name, and port number. There is another way to replace these values via command line. Using set flag, we can replace these values. So instead of having many YAML files, we can have one template YAML file and we can replace these values dynamically when you are writing CACD pipeline. This is very perfect for CACD. So whenever you write a CACD pipeline for your application, you can use those templates and you can replace the values for each and every application on the fly. The advantage of Helm is, suppose we have a use case, there is a microservice application which needs to be deployed on multiple environments like development, test, acceptance, and production. Instead of deploying individual YAML files separately on each Kubernetes cluster, you can package them and can make one application chart that will have all the necessary YAML files needed for that particular deployment. And you can use them to redeploy the same application in different Kubernetes clusters using one command. So which can make deployment process very easier. Now we know that how we can use and where we can use Helm chart. To know more about the Helm chart, let's look at the structure of the Helm chart. This is the typical uh, folder structure of uh, any Helm chart. On top level, we have the, the name of the chart. And we have the chart.yaml file inside the top level uh, directory. And uh, this contains the meta information like uh, name of the chart, version, and list of dependencies. And we'll have the values.yaml. And we already discussed what is values.yaml file will contain. It has the values that needs to be configured for template uh, YAML files. And uh, the charts. Inside the charts, we have chart dependencies. This may chart may have dependence on other charts. Those dependencies will be defined here and templates and the templates yaml files we already discussed what actually template.yaml file will be 
and also we can have a readme file and license files under the base directory these yaml files we need to execute a helm install and chart name this is the command to install those uh, yaml files via helm chart so once we execute uh, this command the template files will be filled with values that are configured in values.yaml file and it will generate kubernetes manifest and it will be deployed on uh, kubernetes cluster actually values.yaml file contains the default values of that particular application suppose after the deployment of values.yaml we want to deploy the new version of specific application may have 3.00 version earlier one was 2.00 so how we can uh, override the default values that are defined in values.yaml file for that we have to run the command helm install dash dash values equal to app hyphen values.yaml file that is the new version of our yaml file and the result will be like this so image name will be the same and port number will be the same and version will be 3.00 so instead of creating a new deployment uh, helm can reuse the existing deployment it just replaces the old values so in this way it will save a lot of time and also we can override the default values via command line with the command helm install dash dash set version 3.0.0 but the first one is the more appropriate version for when you are deploying applications in production environment the another important feature of helm is release management before we should know what is the difference between helm version 2 and version 3 in helm version 2 helm installation comes with two components those two components are helm client and the server the server part is called tiller whenever you deploy the helm chart via the helm install chart the helm client sends the yaml files to the tiller actually tiller runs in kubernetes cluster the tiller reads the yaml files and create the components in the kubernetes cluster this architecture is definitely a additional feature of helm the way the helm client and the server setup works is whenever you create or change the deployment the tiller component saves the each and every configuration that has been sent by the client and it will create the track of history whenever you want to upgrade the changes will be applied on existing deployment instead of creating the new one sometimes the upgrades may go wrong so still you can roll back the upgrades by using the command helm roll back the chart name all this happens because of chart execution history that tiller keeps whenever you send deployments from helm client to the tiller however but this setup is having a big drawback in helm version 2 tiller has too much powers and permissions inside the kubernetes cluster it can create update and delete the components in kubernetes cluster so which may cause a security breach inside the kubernetes cluster that's the reason they have removed the tiller in helm version 3 so we don't have tiller in helm version 3 so solving the security concern but they made it more difficult to manage the deployments because we lost the release management feature in helm version 3 that's it guys uh, before uh, wrapping up the video let's summarize what we have looked at so far we came to know what is helm and its features and when to use helm and also we have looked at how to deploy applications using helm on different environments and also we have looked at each and every feature and also finally we looked at difference between helm version 2 and helm version 3 hope you enjoyed this video and also i think you have learned something new in this week and if you have any questions please put them in comment section i will definitely come back to you as usual i request you if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the regular updates and i would like to request to please share this video to your friends and colleagues so that they can learn thank you